Hi everyone, this is our fourth lesson for the topic of surface area. In this lesson we're going to look at the surface area of circular solids. This is what we've learnt so far. We did a review of area including triangles and quadrilaterals, circles and sectors. Then we looked at the surface area of triangular and rectangular prisms. And then in the last lesson we looked at the surface area of pyramids. There are three main circular solids, cylinder, cone and sphere. Now we will look at others in the next video like hemisphere and truncated cone but for the moment we're just going to look at these three. Let's talk about cylinders for a second. A lot of people think that a cylinder is a prism but it's actually not considered to be a prism and the reason is because it has a circular side. A lot of people think that a cone is a pyramid but a cone is not considered to be a pyramid for the same reason because it has a circular side. So let's start with a cylinder. It's made up of a rectangular curved surface and two circles like this. So we can see here the height of the cylinder and then these are the two circles here with radius r. Now what's this length along here? It's the circumference of a circle isn't it? So that's going to be 2 pi r. So we can work out the area of the curved surface by just multiplying these two numbers. And we already know the area of a circle. So here's the formula for the surface area of a cylinder. You can see that this part here is the curved surface and this part here is the two circles. Here's an example. Find the surface area of a closed cylinder with radius 3 centimetres and height 10 centimetres. Now closed just means that it's got both ends on. So we're going to include both of those circles. Here's the formula. R is 3 and H is 10 and we just substitute in. We just put it straight into the calculator and we get 245 centimetres squared. Now if we have an open cylinder then we have to manipulate the formula. And the cylinder can be just opened at the top for instance or it can be completely opened like a piece of pipe. Have a look at this question. Find the surface area of an open topped cylinder with diameter 10 centimetres and height 8 centimetres. So if we've got an open top cylinder we're going to have the curved surface and we're going to have one circle. So our formula is going to look like this. And the only difference is instead of having 2 pi r squared we've just got pi r squared. The rest is going to be the same. The height is 8 centimetres. Oh here's a bit of a trick. It's got the diameter 10 centimetres instead of the radius but that's pretty easy. The radius will be 5 centimetres. Substituting in and putting it into the calculator we get 329.9 centimetres squared. Here's a practical problem. A water tank needs to be painted with rust proof paint. If the radius is 0.52 of a metre and the height is 1.5 metres, find the total surface to be painted including the bottom and the inside. Now this is an interesting problem. We're going to have to manipulate the formula but we're going to be painting inside the cylinder as well as outside. So I'm going to draw a quick sketch of the net. So we've got a curved surface and then we've got a bottom circle. All right let's think about it. We're going to have to paint this twice, once for inside and once for outside. And the bottom we're going to have to paint that twice, once for inside and once for outside. So let's have a look at our formula. So we've got the two circles and remember this part here is 2 pi r h and I've doubled it. I hope that makes sense to you. All right, let's substitute in the numbers and putting it into the calculator we get 11.5 meters squared. Let's move on to the surface area of a cone. A cone is made up of a curved surface and a circle. And we can see from the net why it's not classified as a pyramid. Can you tell? One of the conditions of a pyramid is that all of the surfaces except for the base shape are triangles. Well have a look at the curved surface here. That's not a triangle is it? So there you go. Here's the formula. Let's have a look at it. This pi r squared is the area of the base circle and pi r s is the area of the curved surface. Now we do need to know the slant height for this formula. We learned about the slant height in the previous video when we were looking at pyramids. And remember we quite often have to use Pythagoras' theorem to work out that slant height. 
Here's an example. Find the total surface area of this cone. So we've got a radius of 2.1 metres and a height, perpendicular height, of 3.9 metres. So the first thing we need is the slant height. So we'll call this slant height S. And using Pythagoras' theorem, S squared is equal to 2.1 squared plus 3.9 squared, which is 19.62. And so S is equal to 4.4 metres. All right, now we're going to put it into the formula. We've got pi r squared plus pi r s. Substituting in and then putting into the calculator, we get 42.9 metres squared. Here's a practical problem. Party hats are to be made out of cardboard. They are to be 25 centimetres tall and have a circumference of 50 centimetres. How much cardboard is needed for each hat? And it tells us that no overlap is required. All right, so let's start by putting on the information that we have. So we know the height is 25 centimetres. We don't know the slant height and we don't know the radius, but we do know the circumference. So our first step is to work backwards from the circumference and work out what the radius is. So 2 pi r is equal to 50. Divide both sides by 2 pi. And let's just give an approximation. The radius is 7.96 centimetres. Now we'll work out the slant height using Pythagoras' theorem. S squared is equal to 25 squared plus 7.96 squared, which gives us 688.36 to the square root. And our slant height is 26.24 centimetres. And then finally, we'll work out the surface area. So we only need the curved surface. We don't need the bottom circle. So we only need the pi rs part. Substituting in the numbers, and we get 656 centimetres squared. And finally, the surface area of a sphere is given by the formula 4 pi r squared. Now, does that strike you as curious at all? That's four circles, isn't it? So basically, the surface of a sphere with radius r can be completely covered by four circles with the same radius. Interesting, hey? Let's have a look at an example. Find the surface area of the sphere with radius 5 centimetres. We just need to substitute in, and our answer is 314.2 centimetres squared. Here's an example. A sphere has a surface area of 452 millimetres squared. What is its diameter? So in this case, we're going to have to work backwards. Let's have a look. Here's the formula. A is equal to 4 pi r squared. We don't know r. Instead, we know a. So it's going to go in here. All right, we need to solve this equation for r. So the first step is to divide both sides by 4 pi, like this. And I've turned that around. Now, when you put this in your calculator, be careful, because there are two terms on the denominator. So put them in brackets, unless you use the fraction button. All right, we get 35.97. Now we want the square root, which is 5.997. Now quick check of the question to see if we've answered it. We haven't, have we? What is its diameter? So we need to double that radius. So the diameter is two lots of 5.997, which is 11.99. And I'm going to round that to 12 millimetres. And we'll finish with a practical problem. The Earth has a radius of 6,400 kilometres. It is said that 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. What area is covered by land? All right, let's start with the formula. And R is 6,400, so let's substitute that in. And when we put that in the calculator, we get a very accurate answer. I'm going to keep all of that accuracy at this point, but then we'll round it quite severely at the end. All right, so our area is 514,718,540 kilometres squared. We want the area covered by land, which is going to be 29%. So let's work out 29% of that number. And there it is there, 149,268,377 kilometres squared. And I think we'll round this to the nearest million. So approximately equal to 149 million kilometres squared. Now, why did I decide to round that to the nearest million? I mean, it doesn't tell us to do that in the question. The main reason is the accuracy given here. Now, it is rounded to the nearest 100, and that could have been an option, but even then, that's still too accurate. 
This has got two significant figures, and that should be a guide for how we give our answer. So I've given three significant figures in the answer, so I'm slightly more accurate than the question. The other thing I want to point out is keeping the accuracy all the way through and then rounding at the end is really good practice. It stops error creeping in. All right, that brings us to the end of this lesson. In our final lesson on surface area, we're going to look at the surface area of composite solids.